Okay, I'm very happy to be here with you, share my thoughts on uh, how to improve the world. And the answer is very simple, children. And today I'm going to talk about children because that's what I do best. Okay? Um, actually, I'd like to talk about very young children. Uh, they're actually the key to the improvement of the world. Okay? I'm a teacher and I have a great interest in education, especially in education of uh, uh, foreign language education of young learners. I have been dealing with children more than 30 years of my life, uh, since five years ago. Oops. <laughs> and I've come to realize that they are the key to uh, improvement of the world. Okay. First, uh, let's look at the title of the speech. It says that children are shortcuts to nature. I, I think you wonder what it is. Uh, this is my picture about five, six years ago, and this one is when I was 10 years old. Used to be nice. <laughs> and innocent. <laughs> okay, um, we are all supposed to be a part of nature, aren't we? Human beings and plants and everything else. But something has happened in the meantime as we became adults. Oops. <laughs> okay. Um, you can see a beautiful picture of sun and the sunflower. Um, as you know, we human beings share a lot with plants, with uh, animals, with minerals. We are the same thing, actually. And um, as you might guess, we, the only way to survive is to live, with har to live in harmony with each other. Isn't that right? So that's the purpose of uh, our existence, live in harmony, if we want to save this planet. Big words. Okay. Um, how are the children the shortcut? That's what I'm going to talk about. As a famous uh, American poet, Emerson, you might know him, 19th century poet, said, he said something very important, listen carefully. Uh, Few adult persons can see nature. Most persons do not see the sun. At least they have a very superficial seeing. The sun illuminates only the eye of the man, but shines into the eye and heart of the child. Big difference. Okay. Um, do you know Walt Whitman? He's also a 19th century American poet. He said something very simple, in the same vein. There was a child, went forth every day, and the first object he looked upon, that object he became. Who? Exciting. Okay. And that reminds me of uh, an elementary school, a third grade class where I teach sometimes. Um, I thought the other day, I, I taught them greetings like, hi, how are you? Oh, not bad, how are you? And then I assigned students um, different parts of, uh, different pairs of characters to become and act the greeting out in front of the class. So they had to become different people. For example, uh, oh, they love this one. Uh, it was Konishiki and a little boy. And uh, I said, just give me the oh, you are Konishiki. And he went, oh, who are you? And the boy said, oh, well, uh, not bad, who are you? And they just loved it. They did it perfectly natural. And they did uh, old man and old woman, and they did um, different friends. And then, in the end, haha, are you ready for this? I said, now you are ducks. Act out this greeting like ducks would. And do you know what I got? <laughs> Only children can do that. They went. Fantastic. A lot of quacking. But the intonation was perfectly English. See? Adults would never do that. They would go. But not the actual ducks. They became actual ducks. Okay? That's a big difference. And you can see how children, uh, how a child feels very much part of nature. It is not difficult for a child to become what he or she already is, very close to nature. Although a form of life might be different, with this desire to understand what at first looks unfamiliar, 
by becoming that, by getting into their shoes, the child has problem, normal problems. Um, I don't know how many of you have played with children, but if you have ever played with children, you know how easy it is to make them turn into a lion, into a flower, into a frog, into anything. They will just turn into those things, and a hero or a human being, whatever. And now we have to think about a goal of teaching uh, English or any other foreign language. Um, it's ba basically to communicate with the rest of the world. In this era, of what we call globalization. And the answer to do that well, if you ask me, is wake up that inner child in you. And if you do that, you won't find people different from you, awkward, uncivilized, or improper anymore. You will probably start searching for the reasons why they behave uh, differently than you do. Reasons, that's the key. Also, I would suggest to people who teach children, think of this fantastic characteristic of children when you teach them and uh, let them be themselves. Only by doing that, you prepare them for the wild world where there are so many differences. And you have to start teaching them about your own family. Family, you would be surprised to hear that. Yes, this is a start. You start with your family because the family is already very different. There's a lot of diversity in the family itself, okay? And uh, to get to prepare children for the world, this is what you do. You start with yourself, actually, and the family, and then the community uh, expands further and further until it gets into international society. I'm very much against uh, teaching small children unless they're very interested. Uh, names of countries, costumes and flags, and all these superficial things. I'm very much against them. This is what they should be concentrating on first. I believe that only, and only by starting with one's family, and slowly expanding into the, their communities, can a child feel fit for the international society. In short, becoming somebody else who is different from you is the key. So, well, how do you teach them that? Um, I love frogs. And I didn't tell you I'm a frog. I have to speak uh, human language now because you wouldn't understand frogish. I turn into a frog middle of the night, I put half pine and I and then I become a frog. And the kid said, how much you should So, uh, So, you can see this very powerful frog. It's from a rainforest. And you can see a spider with six eyes. And uh, this is that way I teach children uh, colors, for example. And uh, for children, knowing that the colors of this frog are protecting it from the predators in the rainforest, and same with a spider, eyes protecting it from predators, is what children should be taught. There's a reason for everything. There's a reason for diversity. Children can do that. Can you? Okay. I would like you to stop and think for a moment. Um, I'm sure you have met with the situation. I asked many parents and many teachers uh, what are the reasons for learning English at a very young age. And I usually get two kinds of answers. Um, one, well, I couldn't do it. I couldn't master it, so um, I hope the children would fare better than myself. That's one reason. Second reason is better job opportunities. Um, but wait. Aren't you looking here at an adult's perspective? Is anybody asking children what they want? No. Adults are being very possessive. Um, adults have the concept of what future might bring. They're guessing based on their own experience and voila, English fits in there. The earlier the better. Get them while they're young. That's very adultish. There are valid reasons, I think, but uh, not from the children's point of view. And now, what are the children's point of view? First of all, what I want you to remember is that children live in the present. They solve problems as they come. For that, they need experience. So the first thing is understanding diversity is what we learn from children. The second one is experience, the way they learn from experience. Um, 
The children might initially be as little as wondering, um, who is that talking to me? Somebody else's voice, not my mom's, okay? Or they might wonder about why this four-legged thing has hair all over it. You know, that, these are the things children, this, and they learn about it from experience. They're too busy. The children are too busy to be thinking about what the adults call future. They don't think about the future. Or the necessity to learn a language which they don't need in their daily life now. They don't need English. They don't need English now. So how do we teach them? Whenever a child encounters, remember this please, whenever a child encounters something new in their daily life, he or she tries to make sense out of it. Okay? For that again, he or she needs to experience things, the things they haven't experienced before. Now my question is, do you see a place for English in there? Or a place for being able to count from 1 to 10 in English? Or a place for knowing all the colors? Or singing head and shoulders, knees and toes song? If you ask me, the answer is no. If it's only English they're learning, the answer is no. And especially if they have already mastered those concepts in their mother tongue. <coughs> I think we should expand the concepts, make them uh, discover something new. If you want to teach a sixth graders colors, and if they don't know them in English, why don't teach them rainforest colors, or teach them aurora, col aurora colors, and things like that, tell them something better, okay? Um, by the way, what do we gain by having sixth graders jump up and down just to learn the word jump? Doesn't make sense to me, okay? Or repeat, I'm happy. Repeat after me, I'm happy. What if I'm not happy? So think, things like that should be changed in Japan, I, I think. Okay, now one more thing I want to uh, talk to you is uh, about the native speakers. Don't, do not idealize native speakers of English because they're not here just to teach perfect pronunciation. Use their experience, they can teach you much more apart from pronunciation, okay? And I think for that, a teacher of English of any nationality will do a better job. So, how can we learn from children in this case? Uh, keep learning from experiences. And don't just speak from your head, from what somebody else has said, or from what you've seen on TV. Go into the world like your head, and confront nature and whatever it entails, directly, face to face. Here is an example of my, <laughs> this is me, used to be much thinner. Okay. Um, from my experience, from actually when kindergarten, all kids used to call me, Chris's mom, or I have four children, Anna's mom, or whatever mom. And, but when they went to elementary school, I was called uh, foreigner, gaiji. Uh, what's the reason? The reason is because, um, for me, I was conven conveniently put into this gaiji category. Um, I was the odd one, because they judged everything just according to my appearance. Okay. But on the other hand, I met a little boy on the street, and he asked me, in very polite Japanese, where are you from? And uh, turned out that boy has spent some time with his parents in Norway. So this, I want to tell you how much experience matters uh, when you learn something. Not everybody can go abroad, but uh, when you go abroad as adults, I think you should uh, uh, make this uh, wandering spirit alive and uh, think like children do. And, and I like Ken Robinson very much, Sir Ken Robinson, who talked to Ted about uh, uh, how schools kill creativity. He said, don't think with your head only. But the part I particularly liked was when he said something like, uh, some university professors live in their heads. They look upon their body as some kind of transport for their heads. I don't, I, I don't know if you understand. So just living in the head, not using other parts of the body. Children learn from other experiences. Uh, they are not limited to head only. They are creative when they dance, sing, act, pretend, draw, cook, and they learn from all these as well as from the mountain treasure hunting, swimming in the river, playing soccer, volleyball, baseball, playing with other children, helping with rice planting, growing flowers, taking care of pets, just to name a few. Howard Gardner calls them intelligences. They are very important because young people are in the process of developing them, which makes them relevant uh, to their lives. Okay, the third lesson the children learn is the joy of discovery. It naturally flows with the joy of experience. 
for example. It's one thing being told that the human body floats in the Dead Sea, another thing is uh, actually doing it yourself. And also, somebody says rice, um, not rice, uh, curry, curry is very spicy in India. If you don't drink tons of water afterwards, you won't know it, <laughs> the real meaning of it, okay? Um, now, at the end, I just want to reiterate, to make a, a slight conclusion. Uh, the three things you can learn from children is diversity, experience, and discovery. It is very important to state here that by doing that, we teach the idea, the concept, that it's okay to be different, and that there are reasons for it, okay? Uh, we develop their mindset, so they can function in any society, in any time. By providing experience, uh, we focus on problem-solving skills and ability to deal with what may come. And by putting value in discovery, we are telling children they can dream and that there is always so much to discover, to be discovered. The future Steve Jobs is right. Okay, just I want to finish quickly. Um, oops, what's coming now? Da 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 I created it. <laughs> Read the Times. <laughs> okay, uh, the Times are telling us now something is happening in the world now, so please be aware of what's going on right now. And I would like to end this presentation, I'm running out of time, with Dalai Lama, Lama's citation. He says, the planet does not need more successful people. The planet desperately needs more peacemakers, healers, restorers, storytellers, and lovers of all kinds. Cha cha. No, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Final step. Are you ready for the shortcut to nature? How are you, man? Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much.